All right, number 11 is coming clean. What? We have no understanding, we have no understanding. Your parents have no understanding. They sure as f can understand this song. This song's called Coming Clean. And Coming Clean is, uh, I mean, I want to say it's, you know, the, the title alone suggests to me that it's about him coming out. You know? I don't know, am I the only one who thinks that? But, you know, the lines, you know, the verse, and the verses, you know, don't really give that away, you know, if, if, if that's what it's about, it's very subtle. I know the beginning, uh, it, if anything, it's a coming of age song, you know, it's about growing up and, and learning, I don't know, you know, dealing with your screw-ups and moving on, you know, and, and, and I think that's what it's about anyway. Uh, the opening line is 17 and strong and all confusion, uh, so, you know, and then it, it kind of goes into the song, and I can't remember some of the lines. I don't listen to the song that much. I remember the chorus, though. It's like, uh, uh, you know, I found out what it takes to be a man. Now mom and dad will never understand. Uh, so, again, I, I just think, it, like I said, maybe him coming out, but it also just may be a story, like a coming of age story. Like I said, mom and dad will never understand. It's like one of those, you know, uh, I'm misunderstood, and I don't care, you know, and I, I like being misunderstood. I want to, you know, hate them and hate the world, and that's what being 17 is all about, right? Yeah. We all were teenagers at one time, so don't lie to me. Don't, don't, don't shake your head. That's the way you were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do this. Yeah. Number 12, Amenius Sleepus. The song's called Immediate Sleepers, huh? I like this song, and I listened to it quite often, actually, as a kid, I think. And um, one thing I did know is that Mike Dirt wrote the song, so that's pretty cool. It was the only song that Billy Joe didn't write on the album. And it's another song that clocks in, I believe, under, under two minutes. I never got the understanding of the title. Um, Sleep is. I mean, it, 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 I don't know. It almost sounds like maybe insomnia. I don't know. I remember the opening line I saw my friend the other day, and I don't know just what exactly he became, but I guess it goes to show that I, it wasn't long ago that I was just like you. Now I think I'm sick and I want to go home. So that's the first verse slash chorus. And um, I think it goes into how have you been, how have I been. What's, what went wrong or something like that. So, it, again, it sounds like another coming of age story about meeting an old friend of yours and being astounded at how different he or she is and how different you are. We're all going to get old. And, you know, we, we all got old, you know, in our 20s. And we reflect back on the people we knew maybe in early high, in the high school or middle school or, or grade school. We marvel at the fact that, you know, how different they are now. Um, or maybe somebody that you knew back then, maybe they died or something, you know, or, you know, it, 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 or they're dealing with crap, you know, so it's like you never know um, um, what's going to happen, you know, when you grow up. Number 13, In the End. So I have two songs on my iPod of In The End, this one and the Linkin Park song, and I admit this song doesn't get as much airtime as the Linkin Park one. It, it's okay. It, it's I like it better, I think, than Coming Clean, though, and because it, it's, you know, it's, it's fast-paced, so again, hi, you know, even if it's a shitty, horribly written song, if it's fast-paced, I love it. So In The End is, um, again... This sounds like another song about an abusive relationship. Um, I know the opening line is all brawn and no brains and all those nice things. I guess you finally got what you want. Someone to look good with and light your cigarette. Is this what you really want? I think that's the opening. No, no, that's like the second verse, that last part. But, um, you know, the chorus is, I figured out what you're all about and I don't think I like what I see. So, I hope I won't be there in the end when, when you come around. 
So, ha, huh, when I come around, I just saw that. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah, we're tying it all in. So, in the end, it sounds like, um, in the end, when you come around. So, what it sounds like to me, I guess, I know I'm getting too over-analytical. That's what happens when I talk about now my love so much. In the end, it sounds like your ex goes to a different person. They think they got what they want. They realize it sucks, and then they come crawling back to you. That's what it sounds like to me, anyway. Number 14, and boy is this a doozy, F.O.D., otherwise known as F*** Off and Die. Something's on my mind, I've been for quite some time, this time I'm on to you. So where's the other face, the face I've been for, what traps for me? What's funny to me about this song is, looking back, I don't remember it at all. I never listened to the song as a kid. Never. I listened to it in my later years, when I was maybe like 15 or 16, and when I found out what FOD stands for, I was like, yes, yeah, fuck the establishment, you know? The typical teenager response, you know, screw the establishment, or fuck the establishment, you know, haha, go off and die, you know? It, it's great, I love it. It's, it's so very subtle, again, coming from the Berkeley rockers. But what I love about the song is, and, and, and I, I understand why I wouldn't have liked it as a kid, it starts off very, 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 very slow, and that's the way it is throughout the whole song. It's just Billy Joe and his acoustic, you know? Uh, you know, something's on my mind, it's been for quite some time, this time I'm on to you. And it, it just, it's a great song. And then the chorus just, you know, the chorus really gets me. I still find myself singing the chorus anywhere. I'll repeat it back at people and they don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, maybe they think I'm, you know, mad with going crazy. The chorus is, uh, let's nuke the bridge we torched 2,000 times before. This time we'll blast it all to hell. And then... After after the second verse and the sec and the second time they go through the chorus, then it starts up. It goes to say, to say, and then boom, kicks in, high voltage, high octane, boom, Green Day rock and roll, baby. It starts up, boom, and then it goes into you know where the whole f off and die part comes in. It's like uh, you're just a fuck. I think I can't explain because I think you suck. I'm taking your pride in telling you to fuck off and die. Great, right? Good stuff. What a closer. But is that really the end? There is technically a 15th track, a hidden track on Dookie. Never knew this as a kid, but I, I found out later on when I got my first iPod, not my iPod, but an MP3 player. Uh, it was a Creative Commons, not uh, Creative Commons, what the heck was it? A uh, Creative Zen Touch, I think it was. Uh, great little MP3 player. Uh, it worked for a number of years. And I remember downloading the song onto the Zen Touch, downloading FOD. And I remember looking at it, it said 8 minutes and 25 seconds, some ridiculous length. And I knew the song itself was only about like 3 and a half minutes, so I was like, what the hell? And I remember inspecting it, and I remember uh, listening and listening, you know, hearing dead air, dead air in between. And then it gets to like the, I want to say, 6 minute mark, and all of a sudden, you hear something else. And it, it blew my mind away. Trust me, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. As it turns out, here it is. Number 15, All By Myself. I was alone. I was all by myself. No one was looking. As it turned out, there was another song on the album now written by Billy Joe Armstrong. Anyone who ever listened to the album Kerplunk by Green Day knows that Trey Cool wrote and sang and played guitar on a song on that album called Dominated Love Slave. All By Myself is his second song, and um, it's even... I, 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 I Dominated Love Slave is better, but All By Myself is just hilarious. Um, Again, it's a joke song. It's Trey Cool, he wrote it, and it's just him playing 
like the most simplest guitar notes. I think I could play these notes. And it, he's just boom, boom, and I was like, I was alone, da -da 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 -da. I was all by myself. And this is a notes on me and my friend Lee would choke on the song so bad, like we would be on the phone, you know, and I'd just be like, I was all by myself. So sorry if this went on a little long. I really appreciate you clicking on this, checking this out, especially if you're a fan of Green Day, especially if you're a fan of this album. And I hope that you, like myself, are celebrating 20 years since the release of this awesome album, the debut mainstream album from the band Green Day. They're still going strong today. It's amazing to me. Um, unfortunately, if, even if they didn't get the press, they I don't think they truly deserved with these three albums. Uh, all three of them still kicked ass. Uno, Dos, Trey, I thought they did a great job. I love their live shows. I still love them to this day. They're still amazing to me. Still my favorite band. Even despite with, you know, my, my taste in metal now nowadays, you know. I still love Green Day. Still my favorite band. And this celebration of Dookie is very special to me. And I think very special to a lot of fans of Green Day. And, um, you know, I'm glad to be able to just sit in front of my little... Kana Rebel T3i here and just uh, film this for you folks if anybody's watching out there and hope that you will um, continue to spread the word you know you know tell people about this video if they're fans of Green Day or the album Dookie please check this out please you know share it like it sub subscribe if you haven't subscribed to me if you're not one of my 28 subscribers um, and I will try to put out content on this channel if I can like I said I will be doing stuff um, I'll be doing random stuff on this channel, specifically, like, you know, dumb stuff that I wouldn't want to put out in my professional, um, uh, professional pro portfolio. So this is the channel, I, I promise I'm going to put content out more, um, but for my more professional stuff, I'm going to put a couple things, like, uh, the, the film One Punch that I did with my friend Chantel. I'm going to put that on YouTube.com slash Sean O'Keefe as a portfolio and a couple other UNC films, probably. And I'll put my professional stuff on that channel if you want to subscribe to that. I'm putting it right here. Otherwise, check out this channel and check out YouTube.com slash The Factory Boy, uh, YouTube.com slash FBI Improv. And, yeah, so that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great night. Hey, little kid, did you wake up late one day? And you're not so young, but you're still dumb, and you're numb to your...